Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be showing you this little uh, VU meter here made out of these old tuning eye valves uh, left and right here. You've got two channels, left and right stereo set up here. And these are the old valves you used to use in the uh, old valve radios really years ago to get the stereo. You used to like get the tuning meter and the nearer they come, the stronger the signal. And I think they used to use these in a few old tape recorders, um, you know, just to, you know, as a VU meter itself uh, before the actual proper VU meters were about. So, um, yeah, these, these are quite old valves, even though these are, these are brand new ones. Uh, these, these have been used years and years ago. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty inexpensive, really. I think this cost me about 15 or £16 pound off of AliExpress again. Um, I did have a little video of um, this other unit I bought off AliExpress. If I just quickly plug it in, just in case anyone hasn't seen it, that's uh, just looking at this one here. But this is like um, a VU meter LED one there. And this was about £20. I put a video up the top if you're interested in that. And it's all pre-assembled, this. And this one here is pre-assembled, really, to a certain extent. Uh, the boards are pre-assembled. The valves are all wired up for you, uh, actually, in the bases. But you've still got to put the wires into the correct positions on these boards, which I'll show you a video of uh, how I did that and how straightforward that is, really. But I just want to bring to your attention here, really, that this, even though it works off at 12 volts, uh, the front here 12 volts is coming in it'll explain a bit more in the video how it's all actually wired up but um it's a 12 volt uh, dc uh, input but this little first little board here this little board here you'll see it in the uh, diagram coming up actually boosts that up you know in, you know steps it up from 12 volts uh, right up to 240 volts sorry 250 volts uh, dc that is so you just can't plug this board into the mains ac it has to be dc uh, so that you know livens it up so to speak uh, from 12 volts to 250 volts and uh, this is where you've got to be careful once you turn this on don't start moving it about and picking it up and that because you're going to get a nasty whack off of it so um, you just something to bear in mind you know I mean once you've got this you know test it out it's all working when you've got it set up put it in your little case you may want to put this in a wooden case or something or an aluminium box or something like that you know use spaces for the aluminium box or make sure you know nothing shorting out etc but um, yeah, just be careful because you know there's a fair bit of voltage flying about, and when you're doing adjustments as well to adjust these, you do get little settings here to adjust the bars and that. Just be careful how you're holding it uh, when you're turning the screwdriver. Just something to bear in mind, really. So okay, the, you know, like I say, this I think it's about 15, 16 pounds, something like that. So pretty inexpensive. It's a bit gimmicky, obviously, like. But you know, someone may be interested, or someone has bought it, and I just thought, you know, it's not. A great deal diagram wise on the internet exactly how this is wired up so i thought i'd just uh, show you my take how, how i wired it up and try and explain it my way so to speak so here's the uh, diagram coming up very shortly of that but what also i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a, a clip of music playing on it uh, a youtube library track i'm going to show you like a scanning around it with uh, a bit of music playing so you can see it from a few different angles as well and i'm going to leave you out with a madonna track you're not going to actually hear it, but it's Madonna holiday track. It's just a bit livelier, just to show you these bouncing up and down a bit quicker. They can be quite responsive. So first of all, here's the video of me actually uh, showing you how to wire it up.
Right, here's the wiring. I'm trying to explain this as easy as I can, straightforward enough. Um, this is the kind of, this is the valve connection they give you, like it's a, the old valve just plugs in the top like that. Obviously you've got to get the white ray around, but you get the idea, it pushes in there like that. That's the base of the valve here. There's all the wiring off of it. And we're just gonna, I've color coded it here, just for a simple process. But I just want to draw your attention to these two blue wires, first of all, as shown here on either side of the two different valves. Uh, they're your eating element, and what happens here, one of them, I'll show you on the thing here, but I'll also show you here as well, try and get this so you know, so it doesn't matter which way around you do them, one of them on this one has to go here, and the other one to a connector block. Now it doesn't matter which one you choose, but one has to go here, and one has to go to this connection here. So if I run through that, first of all, it's the two blue wires off of each valve, so this is valve one, this is valve two, valve one, doesn't matter which blue one, has to go to this positive here, this little bottom board, and just make sure you've got these boards the right way round. The IC's on the right hand side there, the variable resistors on the right hand side, as shown there. And uh, otherwise, you put it in this socket here, you're going to cause a few problems. It probably won't work, but just make sure you get the right socket here. On the back of this socket, underneath the board, it's actually got 12 volts written on it, hopefully on your board as well. But like I say, as long as you've got the board this way up, this is the input here, 12 volts. Either one of these blue wires, goes to the positive there and the other wire doesn't matter which one out of the two goes to a connection block a little connection block to join up to the to another blue wire coming out the other valve there so for instance this valve here doesn't matter which one of the two wires on valve number two goes to the negative there and the other wire just goes to that connection block now for the actual valve itself this is the valve here don't forget the yellow wire of the valve goes to pin one the orange goes to pin three the purple or mauve goes to pin four and the red goes to pin five and that's exactly the same for valve number two just make sure you've got the ball this way up the main driver ball this way up with the green connectors at the bottom now the green connectors at the bottom just pay special attention here is that the positive coming out of there actually kind of crisscrosses over to pin four so if you go one two three four so that goes to pin four where the negative of the 250 volts that's going to come out of here goes to pin three. They just kind of cross over them two wires. They're not one for one. They don't go straight across as you, you probably would like it to do, make it really nice and simple. They just cross there. So don't forget that positive crosses over to there and the negative crosses over to there. Otherwise they'd be the wrong way around. And here's your audio input. There's the ground for the audio right. And there's the actual input there. And there's the ground for the audio left. And there's the actual input there. And when I say that, you're gonna to have to bear the wires probably something like this. So that's the ground of the audio cable. And that's your, like your signal there of a normal like uh, sorry of a normal phono cable there you would have to cut the lead and uh, do it something like that hopefully that kind of explains what i've done there okay so that's that wired up and here's your 12 volts input it can be between 9 and 12 volts uh it's got to be dc uh regulated so um yeah 12 volts dc there goes into there and the negative goes to there so don't forget 12 volts uh, 9 to 12 volts there and just be careful because this starts generating at least 250 volts at the other end here going into this board here so um, you know once you've got it turned on be careful where you touch it and where you put your fingers uh, best not to touch it at all really and if you've got to adjust any of these little pots here which I'll show you later um, try and hold the board with uh, you know some something on top of it if you have to like a cloth or something if you have to hold it down but hopefully uh, you can do the adjustments uh, and the board won't move about anyway but uh, yes, basically it's so that's the diagram for the board. Just be careful, like I say, you've only got 12 volts going in, but uh, coming out of this little like inverter kind of board here, you're going to have uh, 250 volts coming out. So um, yeah, quite high voltage there, just something to be wary of there. But this is the actual diagram. I'll put a picture of this up all by itself without me doing a little wander all over the place so you can see exactly what it looks like there. Uh, yeah, don't forget the valve one is on the uh, left, the left hand channel and valve two there on the right hand side at the top there and then the colour codings for all the wires. Now hopefully that's uh, cleared up a little bit. Well that's the wiring of it and this is some adjustments you can actually do to um, adjust these bars, the movement of these bars. So if I just show you this little video here. Right now I'm gonna show you what these actual little pots adjustment you can do here. You've got two for each channel. Now if we start off with the bottom one here, I'll try and demonstrate it on the rather than me twiddling about on the board while it's live, which I have done getting the camera angles and all that. I think I'm able to just show you uh, on this actual diagram here if we bring the valve into play. Now if you adjust this VR4, what it is is you'll see a green line at the top and you'll see a little green line at the bottom. 
Now you want to get these as far apart with no signal, as far apart as possible. And to do that, you adjust VR4 for the left hand channel and VR2 for the right hand channel valve. And that will space that line out as far as possible. So you just got a little green mark at the top and a little green mark at the bottom. That sorts that out. Well, VR3, this pot here, and VR1, this pot here, this is for the left channel, say, which it is. Uh, this, as the music, like the actual peak of the music, these, these bars will close up. They will, you know, touch each other, so to speak. This is how much they will touch. I mean, you can get them overlapping if you want to. I have it so just nearly touch, so at full volume, like a big bass drum it or something like that, full capacity, so to speak, uh, uh, full modulation. Uh, these lines near enough touch, and you can adjust that by this uh, variable resistor here, VR3, and the same with VR1 for the right channel. I mean, you, you may want to have them overlapping, which you can, and you know, it just depends where you, you know, where you adjust that uh, variable resistor. So that's what they do. This VR4 does the gap at the top, get them as far away as possible at the top, and this one here actually gives you how far they're going to come down when the music hits its peak. Okay, in this next video, I'm just going to uh, you know pan round it a bit with the camera, just show you a few different angles. And in this last video, like I say, this is Madonna playing uh, Holiday, um, so it's a bit lively. The I know, show, hopefully show you more of the movement out. No, they do move up and down pretty quickly, just to give you an idea of that. But I'm afraid there's actually going to hear no music. You're just going to see them bouncing about. So I'll leave you with that for that video. And uh, until the next time, I'll say thanks for watching. Just going to play this video out now, Madonna, and I'll see you all soon.